Since I was about 23, I've been trying to figure out how the hell to make money while I sleep. Now, my vision for my future is to have passive income from investments and businesses, creating the lifestyle that I'm looking for so that whether I choose to get out of bed and go to work or go to my business, I am fine financially and I've got time, I've got freedom and I can live the lifestyle and have the impact on the world that I wanna have now. If that's you, then this is the video for you because in this one, we're gonna get super granular on exactly how Simon and I are doing it, as well as why we think it's so important for you to do this in your lifetime and hopefully while you're still young enough to enjoy yourself. My first introduction to making money while I sleep was probably from Rich Dad Poor Dad when he's talking about having money work for you instead of you having to work for money. And I'd never ever in my whole entire life thought about that before I'd read the book because I just thought you go to work, you earn money and, and that's what you do, right? Yeah. But opening my eyes up to a different world and opening up my mind to the availability of actually having money coming in when you're actually doing nothing, sleeping, on holidays, whatever it might be. I'm like, okay, I need to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I remember reading that book as well and he's like, so if you have this property and you own it outright and you're getting $500 a week worth of income, yes, you lose you know, a little bit of that, 150 bucks of that a week, the taxes and the costs associated with the property, but if you've got 350 bucks a week of income coming in. And at the time I went, well, I only really need about 800 bucks a yeah. week to do everything I wanna do. If I own two, two and a half of these properties outright, I will be done and I'll never have to work again. And at 23, when I didn't really have a vision for my future or yeah. I didn't understand what my values were or how I wanted to contribute to the world, I was like, I'm doing it, <laughs> get out of my way. And I was like hustling to make it happen as quickly as I could. <laughs> yeah, fuck it oath. And now uh, it just, that, that goal just keeps getting a little bit higher and we'll, we'll get into kind of trying to find that actual number of what you want to be. But the first step to this, I really think is finding your purpose and, and finding your why because this certainly isn't going to happen itself. I think there's so many people out there that are naive thinking that it's all going to work out. It's all going to be fine and dandy, but you need to really take control of your own destiny and you need to action this yourself. And I think having that driving purpose, having like a really solid why is the best way to do it. And, you know, in planning for this video, I was just telling Ben about this podcast I'm, I've been listening to from uh, Tim Ferriss and um, Ramit Shah or something like that. He's, he's a guy from over in the States and he was talking about like money management and like creating a, a plan for the future and, and like having an idea of what your rich life looks for. And, and I loved it because like nobody actually thinks about it. Like when you start thinking about financial freedom, financial independence, everybody just goes to cover their costs. Um, they don't really think about like the life that they want to be living or what they're, why they're sacrificing things today to have something tomorrow. And, you know, I think having that plan is, is really, really important, you know, understanding what it is that, that you want in the future because it's a grueling process. It's going to take a hell of a long time to get there and you need something that's going to pull you through those tougher times and those scary moments. I love that, man, because society's model currently looks like this, right? You go to school, yep. you finish school, you do a trade or a uni degree yep. or you just start working. You then go and get a job. You earn absolutely shit money at the start because like the people at the top want to take advantage of that <laughs> cheap labor well, before you're smart enough to realize that you're worth more. And then you figure it out slowly over time and slowly figuring it out for most people looks like 45 to 50 years in the workforce. And then you retire with the average Aussies retiring with three or 400 grand in super. And then it's how long that super money lasts for before you end up on the pension now. That is society's structure and plan mm. for your financial future. They do not tell you any of this shit in school at all. They actually set you up to be like the ideal like follower of that system. Mm. And that's cool. Like I was, you know, taught that way. I didn't know any better. But as I started to read books, started to listen to podcasts and started to think about what I truly wanted and even more important, saw other people that were living in a different way to what I'd seen before, I went, shit, like 
my vision for me is financial freedom and choices. Mm. Not to ball, not to live this extravagant lifestyle, but to have time back. Mm. And I know that people that get their time back make better quality choices and those choices make a better quality life for yourself, for the people around you, hopefully, and also for the future of the world. Like, I, yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah, and it was interesting. When I was listening to this podcast, I was like, shit, I haven't even really figured that out, like, exactly what my life looks like. I've just gone, cool, this is my intention. This is why I want to do it. I know, I know why I want to do it, but I didn't know exactly how it was going to happen and, and exactly how much I needed to sustain the lifestyle that I'm aspiring to work towards. So it was really cool to listen to this. And I think it literally just takes sitting down for 20, 30 minutes, maybe once a month or once a quarter with your partner or yourself and putting this stuff like pen to paper. You know, you've just been saying that you just started journaling mm. for the first time and just getting that clutter that shit in your head <laughs> onto a piece of paper regardless if it makes sense or if it's like what you actually end up doing longer term just starting to brainstorm and, and go well look for me i want to have six weeks holidays a year i want to go on a surf trip or a snowboard trip every single year i want to make sure that i can be there for my kids at their big events in the future when when that time comes and most importantly, I want to make sure that I can surf at least three, four days a week and eat the best food out there, like eat as close to the source, eat as organically as I possibly can, support local farmers. And they're sort of my big rocks. And I'm like, well, that ain't shooting for the stars necessarily. And it's like, you don't need a whole heap of money to do that. And it's like, you aspire to something. But then when I actually figured out what it is that I want my life to look like, I'm like, well, I don't actually need all of this stuff. And I think that's like a really comforting feeling in the sense that, you know, I don't need to go so, so, so far just to have a happy life. You know, I just need maybe, you know, a thousand, 1500 bucks per week after expenses to enjoy, enjoy an amazing life. I love that, man. Like I had two things that I wanted to share that have massively changed me. Now, one of them happened yesterday. <laughs> Sick. Um, yeah, it was so good. And then the second one was just a while back. Now, before I started this business, I was working with this guy and he was a lot older. He hadn't really got there financially until he was in his 50s. And that was encouraging for me to be like, cool, like regardless of where you're at and what stage of life you're at, you can like change your stars very, very quickly. But he said to me that most people spend their time focusing on their job or their business. Yeah. Now, whether it's a, if you've got a, a business and you're still having to work in it, you've just got a really a better paying job or a really freaking stressful job that's not paying that well. And it's like at the heart or the core of your financial structure, if your job or your business is there, then you're always going to be torn, twisted. Your values are always going to be a little bit off because you don't have the luxury of complete freedom. But mm. freedom is a, is a mindset. It's not like anything's going to change once you get that freedom, trust me. <laughs> so it's like, he said that your job in your 20s, 30s, 40s is to replace that job as the center of your financial universe with passive income. Now that could be from Love crypto, it. stock, shares, property, a business, a side hustle, whatever it is. But he said only once you've replaced that with the 1500 bucks a week that you're looking for or I've got three kids in private school and I do want to do a lot of overseas travel in the future as part of my future. Mm. So I, I think I honestly need more like three grand a week personally. Mm. And it's like three grand a week, once my, and I'm nowhere near that at the moment, but I'm, I have the structure that will get me there over time and so yeah. do you. It's yep. just like there's a time delay on paying off all that debt. But it's like once that's changed, that is choices and that is freedom. And it's like real financial freedom looks like how long can you live without having to go back to the source yeah. of work? Yeah, and I love like, it so much. It's simple. Now, the second thing that happened yesterday is I had a massive conversation with my accountant and I said, I'm talk thinking about this thing or that thing. And he's like, Ben, why? And no one asks you why. No like, one asks why. Hey. No one asks why. Like society praises people that keep going. Yeah. And this is the thing. Like I was, I was listening to a different podcast over the weekend and they were talking about that. It's like society praises the hustle, the grind, the work in 80 hours per week. And it's, it's bullshit. <coughs> society. Sick society. It, it shouldn't be like that. It should be 
we should be valuing happiness, choices, um, you know, personal success. Or just figure out what you value and then act on that on a daily basis. That yeah. is that is true happiness. Like find out what matters to you and then do it until you find joy in your life. And it mm. might take time, but you will end up finding it. But he said, Ben, you are so far past where you set out to be when you came into my office six years ago. He's like, stop and enjoy the time with your family, with your mm. friends, reconnect back with your family. Like choose to live the way that you are now because he's like, he said to me, and this was like heavy, he said, I had one of my wealthiest clients in the office last week. This guy's got $12 million in the bank. He's 80. He said this man was sitting there across the boardroom table from him. He's like, his family doesn't speak to him anymore. He's lost his wife. And he said he was crying because he spent his entire lifetime working for all this money. And he's like, it's too late. I've missed it. And it gives me goosebumps mm. because... I don't want you to miss it. No, I don't think anybody wants to miss that. And, and I think we need to start valuing the right things and, and valuing relationships, valuing time, valuing experience and yeah. valuing happiness as opposed to fill you a up. dollar figure. And, and I was talking to one of our clients yesterday. She's 23 years old. She's just settled on her first investment property. And I'm like, how do you feel? And she's like, I don't really feel anything. I know who you're talking about because she said the same thing to me on the day that I bought the property with yeah. her. She's like, it's, it's nothing for me. And I'm like, well, make it something, man. Like, yeah. celebrate this. Yeah, well, it happened twice yesterday. And, and I'm like, I know that feeling because I experienced it when I bought my first, second, third and fourth property. The big, like, <laughs> this goal will make me happy. And then it's the letdown of, oh, shit. It doesn't change a thing. So it's like, and you hear everybody say it. I think, is it Jim Carrey that has that famous quote? Or wish maybe everyone Rock, could be... Yeah, I wish everybody could be rich and famous to realise that it's not all what it's cracked up to be. Something along those lines. And it's the truth. Once you get somewhere, you just immediately pivot to the next goal. But I'm like, okay, well, let's actually step back here and have a bigger picture view of, of what you've done. I'm like, yes, you bought the property and it doesn't feel as though it's changed, but I'm like, think about yourself four years ago when you were 19 years old and you decided that I'm gonna start saving a deposit to buy my first house. What did you know back then? What sort of financial position were you in back then? Um, you know, How confident were you about success and money and investing? And then look at who you are today. And I'm like, it's not just about the goal of owning the property, but it's the person that you have to become to actually buy that property I as well. Love that, man. The sacrifices, the education, the learning, the decisions, all of these things that you've done. The heaviness that you're going to get from your environment around this isn't the right thing because their fear is being projected on you as well. Yeah, so you just got to understand that's it's always going to be the same. It's never going to feel great once you've done it, but you've got to have a bigger picture view as to like, well, why? And I think for you having that realization, because it was the same for me, it's like, I want to buy two properties. As soon as I bought two, I wanted to buy three. As soon as I bought three, I wanted to buy four. My initial goal was, you know, fifty thousand dollars worth of passive income. It's quickly gone to seventy-five, a hundred now, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, it's, it's <laughs> that's my goal, man. Yeah, it just it just keeps keeps going. Kicking that can, baby. That's what the brain loves to do until you jump in and stop it. So now, how do you actually do it? How do you make money by, while you sleep? Now, there are so many different ways you can do it. You can do it through business, through stocks, through crypto, through property. There is so many different ways that you can do it. Now, for us, we chose property. Oh, fuck. I'm so sorry. I'm like, Tripping? I'm like am, I, am I even doing this fucking app? I forgot what we were even talking about. <laughs> when you brought it back to that, I'm like, is this the video we're doing? Or did we record that last time? <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. So it's, there's so many different ways. But property, hands down for us, you know, that's the channel that you're all watching. That's what we talk about all the time. It's what we're <laughs> passionate about because we thought about the why. We thought about the values. We thought about the vision. And... Property was just something that aligned most with all of those values and the longer term why. So that's what we've chosen. And, and I'm guessing that everybody that's listening to this is choosing property as well. And it's freaking awesome as well. Property's fun, man. People actually need it. So like there's two very simple ways. I'll talk about one and Simon will talk about the other. The first way is the capital growth play. Now, I think in Mastering the Australian Housing Market, John Lindemann said, Prices in Australia for 100 years had gone up 11%. It 
averaged out over that time. I don't think that's going to continue happening. Definitely not going to continue <laughs> happening now. It is right now, but not long to increase term. by 100% a year. <laughs> but, you know, on top of that, when you look at 50 years worth of data from CoreLogic and Homely, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane have all averaged over 9% per year. So there's a strong reason why people go for property over other asset classes. One, it's stable, it's less liquid. There's a lot of people that aren't investors in the market. But most importantly, like... I can put in 20 cents and the bank will give me 80 cents back. Yeah. That is leverage and that is the reason why people do so well out of property. Now, in terms of leverage with capital growth, let's say that you own one property today that's worth 500K anywhere in Australia. If that market goes up 10% this year, you've made $50,000 without getting out of bed. That's a thousand bucks a week, you know, hundred and something bucks a day. And everybody's loving that right now. Everyone's to, loving it. I talked to so many people. You know, we were just looking at the numbers. Sydney's gone up by over twenty percent over the last twelve months. Brisbane nineteen percent. It's just insane right now. And and that's that's money while you sleep right there from this capital growth model. Hundred percent. Like you know, let's say you've got a million dollar property in Sydney that's gone up twenty percent this year. You've made two hundred thousand bucks or four grand a week while you're sleeping. Now, this is one of the reasons why people invest in property. What I love most is when you start to think about the longer term play. So it's cool when you make 10% or 20% in a year, but what's even better is when you get the average effect of property going up longer term. So same example, let's say that we go for a 500K property and it goes up by 4.8% a year for 15 years. You've turned 500 grand outside of your job or your business into a million bucks. You know, let's say like a lot of our clients, you wanna go a bit bigger than one property or like myself and Simon, and you end up with a couple of million bucks worth of assets. Mm. Now, 10% growth on a couple of mils, 200K. Mm. 20% growth on a couple of mil is 400 grand, 8,000 bucks a week while you're asleep. What if you held 2 million bucks worth of property for the next 15 years and it went up by the 4.8% a year? you're now sitting on 4 million bucks. What if on top of owning it for the 15 years, you figured out a way to pay off the entire debt position and you're worth 4 million bucks in 15 years? It's massive. Insane. Now, if that 4 million bucks, you hold it for another 15 years doubles in value, 8 million bucks. Like what would that do to yours and your family's life and how hard would it be for you to go out and buy a couple of good assets in the next five years if you really put your mind to it. I absolutely love it. And, you know, I'll probably do a few of these throughout my life, but there is, you know, it takes a long time to sell a property. There's high entry and exit costs with real estate agent fees, stamp It's not duty, all profit there, but yeah, of course, So sorry. like, <laughs> but it's a great model and it, and it really works. But what we're both striving towards is, is more of a cash flow model and more, more of a cash flow goal because it doesn't mean that we have to change these properties all the time. We don't have to sell them to, to reap the benefits from the capital growth of the assets where if you get some good cash flow, then you know that's gonna replace a passive income and then you've also got the potential capital growth model down the line if you wanna sell one of those properties. So, you know, for example, this cash flow model, let's say it costs you $400 per week to hold that property. Now that's factoring all the holding costs. And I know that's quite low for the average property, but this is just an example. So. 400 bucks for your interest, your management, your insurance, your rates, all of the holding costs with that particular property. But you're renting it out for $550 per week. You know, that's that's $150 per week positive cash flow that that one property is for you. You know, that's an extra 150 bucks per week. But let's say that you own three properties completely outright that were, were returning you about $500 per week. Yeah, you're going to have some holding costs associated with that. But that $1,500 per week from the three properties times by 50 weeks per year is $75,000 per year. Now, coming back to what Ben was saying, that job, what you're earning the money for now, what you want to do is try and replace that. Now, this is a really sound way of being able to actually replace that income longer term. And, And this is what we're actually working towards figuring out how we can pay off the debt on the properties over the longer period of time so that we own them completely outright. Let's say at that point in time, if you got $1,500 per week of income, you would assume that that portfolio should be worth at least $1.5 to $2 million. 
So then you potentially got the $2 million worth of equity worth of capital growth there as well. So that in the future, if you no longer want to manage the property, if you no longer want to deal with tenants, you could potentially liquidate that and then pocket the two mil cash. I love it, man. Like obviously everyone's got a grandma and you know, obviously a couple of them. And one of our grandmas, you know, lost her husband super young and had eight kids and was never able to financially recover from that. And so she was never able to buy a single property. No, rented her whole life. Rented her entire life. And I saw what that looked like in retirement in terms of the nursing home living off government assistance, which is super, super rough. Luckily, a couple of her kids did good and eat on a weekly basis. Dad and a few of the others kicked in for her, which helped. My other grandma, which was Omar um, from Holland, she bought one, just one property on the northern beaches of DY in Sydney. It was just a standard residential block at the top of the hill, like sick a spot. They bought it for 6,000 pounds. 6,000 pounds. In the, I think in the 40s. Now, when she got to retirement age, she was able to sell that property and move into like fully catered, cared for living with three or four other people this in this place beautiful home. was mint. It was expensive, but it was mint. She had a pool, they had a cat, they had a dog. They set up their own bedroom with their own bed, their own artwork throughout the room and throughout the house as well, rather than our other grandma, which it literally felt like a hospital. Honestly, and so just that one choice for her, you know, 40, 50 years before she needed it, completely transformed her life. And that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about Mm. getting rich quick. We're Mm. not talking about like replacing your income quickly. Like it takes time. Mm. You're going to get belted through this journey. Like socially, the structure of society, like mental health wise, it all has a little bit of a toll because you are effectively trading some of the moment to sort of set this up. Like it's much, much, much easier not thinking about the future, blowing every single dollar that you have and enjoying your moment. But trust me, like by doing that, and I see so many people that do that, and we talk mm. to so many people that have done that, at some point that aha moment comes along. Mm. And you know, it's at 45 or 55 or 65, but it will come. And you don't want to be rushing around trying to set it all up in 10 years because the market is brutal over 10 years. Every 10 years for 200 years, there's been a major crash in stocks or property prices. And so, you can get wiped out if you're trying to do it too soon. Where Mm. if you've got 15 to 30 years, it is a pleasure. Like it is smooth sailing. There'll be times where the value of your property dips 30% and times where it goes up 20% in a year. But the averages will work out in your favor and your life and your choices and your kids' choices will completely change as a result of you having a crack. You really just got to make the decision is, do I want to continue working a job or, or trading my time away from my life to earn some money or am i going to try and work smarter not harder learn how to do this stuff properly and slowly but surely implement a plan that's going to enable you to make money while you sleep so that if you're having a bad day or a bad week you can choose to just focus on yourself and regenerate that energy rather than you know having to force yourself to go and do something because you got to pay the bills you know, the thing that I loved about what you said at the start of this podcast from what, whatever this is, a video podcast, <laughs> about the other podcast you're listening to is by thinking a little bit about what you really want in the future, yeah. it, when that time comes, because your brain and your body doesn't know when's enough. Yeah. As humans, we don't know when's enough, and that's why civilization looks like this now, yeah. which is incredible because people didn't know when was enough and so you get a tesla that comes in that's prepared to work 20 hours and sacrifice himself for the betterment of humanity forever 20 hours a day 20 hours this a day guy is an animal a eh? <laughs> and so it's like why it's important to do what simon's done and why the conversation with my accountant was so important is because you've got to know when's enough you've yeah. got to know when Line in the i've sand. done it whether it's a hundred bucks a week passive or whether it's 10,000 bucks a week passive, when you get to that point, your brain will have already moved to the next one. Yeah. And so what my accountant said to me is like, Ben, put on your bathroom mirror and your fridge. I have achieved my goal. Now I'm going to absolutely love my life and be present. I and love it was that. just like far out, like just let it, let it go. Like once you've set the structure up, like Simon's got a portfolio that once you finish it, 
it's going to give you a shitload more than 1500 a week. Yeah, yeah. I've got a portfolio that's going to give me the 3000 bucks a week once I finish off the things that I need to yeah. do. It's like the accumulation's done, now enjoy and slowly pay off the yeah. debt. That's it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just to reconfirm, 1500 after costs. After costs, that's yeah. sort of what I, I oh, would like. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's like that's kind of factoring in, you know, school fees, petrol. Ah, oh, okay, like cool. All of the all of the holding costs, because okay. I, yeah, that's where I was sort of getting at. And fifteen hundred of play money. I, a I week. think it's fun as well. Like I love sitting down. You know, I've just had a week off to just re-energize myself, recharge the batteries, because I know that's what I need to stay in flow and to to be a peak performance. And it gave me an opportunity to spend a lot of time thinking about this sort of stuff, you know, what kind of life I want in the future. And you can shoot for the stars and, and you'll hit the moon, but then I like to kind of plan for the worst, hope for the best. And I'm just like, you know, a simple life. Like I was in lockdown for that holiday and still made the most of that time. I love Still that. Had, a, a, had a great week off and, and made the most of it. And it was a really great realisation because I'm like, I don't need to do all this stuff that I've, I've wanted to do to still be happy and still have a really fulfilling life. And, and that was a super comforting feeling that made me recognize that, you know, it's great to go for this level. And, and fortunately, from the decisions that I've made, I will be in a far better position than I'm setting my goals at. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like worst case scenario, I know that I can just have a really fulfilling, happy life with a lot less and that that was a comforting feeling as well i love that that man. makes sense <laughs> can, I, can i ask you this like do you think after the reflection in the last week that you've got enough and you've had that almost that same moment that i've had like outside of upgrading your ppr at some point that you might yeah. want to do to be walking distance to the beach or whatever lifestyle you want to raise the kids with like do you think now after reflecting back that like once you've knocked down and built the granny flats yeah. and renovated, you've, you've done what you want to do? Um, Obviously life a, doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. It's like I think in terms of my financial goals, yes, that will enable me to do what I want. But I think in terms of my lifestyle, enjoying a challenge, yep. um, enjoying purpose and, and giving back, I'm going to want to do more. Sure. And I think with experience comes, you know, a lot as well. And I want to be able to, in the future, continue doing this, teaching other people how to do this, educating other people how to do it. So I feel as though my journey is going to continuously be investing and, and um, you know, learning new things, doing different things, but more out of like a, a it sounds kind of wankerish to say, but like a why not, as opposed to like, and an it's, 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 it's not a necessity, it's a, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do this and I enjoy it, so I'm going to do it. For sure. I love that, man. That was sort of when I was talking to the accountant on the phone, I was like, right now is the time for me to just chill out and enjoy that because I've got young kids. I'm that, only four um, years in Yeah, as well. you're only just starting the journey. And, you know, for me, it's like I've got these little people at home, like a lot of you guys listen to these too. <laughs> little people. Like, <laughs> I just want to just chill with them. But it's also like... The same as that, man. Like, there's periods in nature and in life of, like, going and, and not going. And I, I think in my financial cycle, it was good to hear that perspective because I've gone and gone and gone and it's nice to take a pause. But I love the game too. And that's yeah. what I said to him yesterday. Like, I'm like, man, I'm not playing to win and I'm not playing for necessity. I'm playing because I fucking I love the game. Yeah. Like, I love property, same as you. I love helping yeah. people and I love that we get to share this content with you guys. And... I hope you get to find your passion in this too. Like yeah. whatever your investment thing is that you just love doing that you do for free. Yeah. That you'd that. learn at night. Do that. Yeah, just do that. And I think that's the best way to figure out how to earn money while you sleep as well. It's like figure out how to monetize what you love doing and do that. For sure. Because it's never going to feel like you actually have to work if you're, if you're doing that. So it's like the compound effect on top of it. It's like, well, I'm earning money while I sleep, but then... I'm earning money while I work, doing what I love, which doesn't feel like work. <laughs> so it's like a, that I invest in creating more money while I sleep. <laughs> I like it. It's a perpetual I'm, cycle. I'm so grateful to get to share these ideas with you. And it's it's simple. You know, start with why and a vision. Yeah. And then, you know, get into the detail and find out how much you need in terms of fixed cost plus lifestyle and the life that you'd want to lead and what that might cost now and in the future as your situation changes. Because... 
it goes from not me needing much to needing a fair bit during the kid phase to not meeting much again in the future. And it's like remembering that. And then from there, you know, choose your battle. Like we've talked about recently, like if there's going to be stress in life and one of our good mates, Jackson, has been talking about this heaps at the moment. If you're going to have stress, choose your stress. Like choose your, choose stress. your poison. It's like if you're going to invest, then investing is scary. Yeah. Choose something that you enjoy doing that yep. you do for free and then create a plan or partner with people that can help share ideas with you that you might not yep. get because you're not far enough along yet to get it. Mm. And then, you know, just consistently do the work and make it happen and show up rain, hail or shine. Yeah, consistency is the key for, for all of this stuff, especially in the beginning. You just need to do the reps because it ain't going to happen itself. For sure, but we wish you all the best, like yeah. truly with this journey. That and you're I on. hope everybody gets to that point where they are earning money while they're sleep while they sleep and you can see the forest through the trees and you're like, Hell yeah, I've got my twenty year anniversary coming up in, in ten years time from now. I'm gonna go on a on a holiday, I'm gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars on a holiday because I deserve it. And it's like I want everybody to have whatever you want. And I think it it's a choice being in Australia being you know in in this country that that we're so fortunate to grow up in like i feel as though it is a choice for a lot of people but you just got to be realistic with your time frames regardless of where you're starting from i love it like one of my best mates percy um he at 22 23 said to me mate i'm putting a hundred dollars a week away so that when i hit my 50th i'm flying you me and all the boys plus love our partners it. to wherever the fuck in the world we want to go first class and having the absolute time of our life. Now, he's one of these guys that from the youngest age has known what he's doing mm. and why he's doing it and how much he needs once he gets there and he's been working towards it. Now, he's 36 now, sent me a message the other day. He's like, man, I'm a millionaire now through my business plus my investment properties. He's like part owner in a bunch of epic shit and he's fucking doing it and it's like, he didn't go to uni, he didn't go to TAFE, he didn't do a trade. He is just straight out of school, ground up, working his ass off to build the skills and now he's killing it. And it's like the combination of reps long term has just completely changed his life and it's, it's inspiring. Yeah, hell yeah. That's so sick. I, I always knew you, Percy, Macca, yeah. everyone was going to fall on their feet. Just a super successful bunch of guys. Um, but that's sick. Like... Yeah, I hope I hope everybody's kind of enjoyed today, and it's given you that little like that spark of motivation or fire that you need to to go down there and do it. And you know, maybe after this video, sit down by yourself or with your partner and have a think about what type of life that you want to be living in the future, or how happy you are in your current life, and what needs to change to create more happiness or more time or more space to do those things that you love, and then figure out how you can start implementing that because. You know, we're living. Let's live. <laughs> <laughs> Let's live, baby. <laughs> I love it, man. Thanks so much for this one. I had so much fun yeah. recording it. Wish you guys all the best for the rest of the year and beyond and can't wait for you guys to come back soon and hear more. Hell yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty.